so you're making a game and you spend hours trying to get the player controls right. And now your game is boring because there's no enemies to fight or run from. I mean, what do you do? Delete the project? No, you add some enemies to the game and make them follow the player, except there are some issues. Take a look at this example. Here we are making the enemy so that it'll always face the player, no matter what. Not always ideal in every game, but it works for now. Then we add a velocity towards the forward vector of the enemy, essentially making it follow the player at all times. Now the first and the obvious problem would be how would it detect if there's a wall in the way so it wouldn't get stuck, or if it can even reach the player at all. And if it can reach the player, what's the shortest path to take? Now to achieve all of this, we're going to need something called pathfinding. Basically, it's an algorithm that'll help us determine the shortest path to take to reach our destination. Now, before you get overwhelmed by all of this, Godot actually offers some notes to make this process a lot easier. Now, the first node we'll look into is going to be called the Navigation Region 3D. And you can see that it says this node is actually experimental, so they might update it or change it to something else in the future. Now with this node added to the world, if we click on this warning icon here, you can see it actually requires a navigation mesh resource to work. So I'm just going to add a navigation mesh resource here. And if you click that, you can see all of the options that this node has is going to be revealed for us. But before we do that, let's go ahead and design a simple level for this navigation region 3D to work on. Now one thing to keep in mind is that the area that you want your enemy to be able to walk on and follow you, you need to make that under the navigation region 3D node. Now you can see I'm making these obstacles as static body 3Ds and that's because I also want my player to be able to interact with these. If you wanted to, you could just use the mesh to bake the navigation and just forget about the collision shapes. And there's actually an option for that. But I think this is the most practical way that you'd probably want to be doing this. Now enough with that, here comes the fun part. To actually generate the navigation mesh, all you want to do is click on the navigation region node and click on bake navigation mesh. And you can see it actually generates the navigation mesh for us. Now you can see on the inspector tab, I have the cells and agents tabs open and you can change a lot of options here that will directly change the way this map is generated. But before we change anything, I decided to create the enemy node first just so we have something for the enemy to follow. And the script is a simple FPS controller, we're not doing anything for pathfinding in the player's script. And if you don't have any idea how to make an FPS controller, I have a video on my channel that'll teach you how to make a barebone FPS controller, so definitely check that out if you're interested. Now with that out of the way, let's go ahead and set up the enemy. Now this is a 3D model that I was using in one of my older projects that I'm basically reusing here and it basically has a collision shape and it needs to have a collision shape because it's under a character body 3D. Now before the enemy is complete we need to add one more node to it and that is a navigation agent 3D. This is going to help us find the actual position that the enemy needs to go to reach its destination. Let's go ahead and create the script for it. I'm gonna call it enemy and put it on my scripts folder just to stay organized. And it's inheriting from the character body 3D, that is fine. Let's press create. So first things first, let's create a variable for the speed of the enemy. And then let's create another variable to store the path for the player and this is going to be a node path, which is basically just a string. And then we will create another one for the navigation agent, which is going to be of type navigation agent 3D. And then we'll create another variable for the actual player node. And then we will assign it on the ready method. Now to actually initiate the pathfinding algorithm, you need to set the position of the player to the navigation target position and also call the get next path position method. To visualize this, you can go ahead and turn on the debug on the navigation agent. And this is going to actually draw a line in 3D in the game, which can help a lot with debugging. 
Now you can see we actually have an error from the previous run and that is because we need to await the physics frame before we change the target position. So to do that, I'm actually going to create a new method and just turn off the physics process and then turn it on after the physics frame signal. This will make sure the map is synchronized for the navigation server. Now to actually move the enemy, we're going to have to change the velocity of it. To do that, we're getting the current position of the enemy and we're getting the direction to the next position multiplied by speed. And then finally, we want to call the move and slide method. And now you can actually see that the enemy is following the path, but not really looking at the right direction. Also, it can easily get stuck on corners. We can easily fix this issue by calling the look at method, which is basically going to make the enemy face the player at all times. And you can see here it is working pretty fine, but it's kind of tilting towards the ground, which is not really desirable. Unfortunately, with look at, you don't really get a control how smooth the turn is going to be. Now the way I'm going to make it smoother is with basis manipulation. Basically we'll give it a forward vector and we'll calculate the other vectors based on that forward vector. And then we will use the basis.slurp method to smoothly transition into the next direction. And you can see that has actually made the turns quite a lot smoother, especially turns on corners. Now to fix the enemy getting stuck on corners, it's actually pretty simple. All you want to do is click the navigation agent node and change both path desired distance and target desired distance, which you can see works pretty fine. Now the next thing I wanted to add was a way for the enemy to catch the player and finish the game. Now you could do this with collision shapes, but I decided to use it as navigation finished method, which checks if the enemy has reached the final position. Now for now, I'll just add a debug breakpoint so we know that it works and then we can add something later to it. And to stop the enemy going crazy when it reaches a wall, we're gonna make sure that it only changes its velocity when it has not reached the target yet. And if it has reached the target, then it should just stay there. So we will set the velocity to be just zero. And now you can see the enemy is following the player until the player goes somewhere where the enemy cannot reach. In that case, it'll just stay there. But that is only if it has reached the final position where it can go. And the moment the player goes off, it starts following it again. And you can see when it reaches the player, we hit the breakpoint. Now the new problem is whenever the player gets to a surface where the enemy can't reach, the enemy kind of looks at the wrong direction. We can easily fix this by making sure that we're looking at the next position only when the path to the player is reachable. Otherwise, we're just going to look at the player instead. And now you can see whenever we try to jump to a surface where the enemy cannot reach, it's just going to look at us instead which kind of makes it feel a bit more natural. So that's it everyone, thanks for watching and thank you so much for staying this far through the video. I will be adding more features to this AI, make it more advanced, maybe add some patrol path and line of sight. So yeah, see you soon.